Hi everybody, my name is Aidan Hines and I run a company called Sculpture Studios here in the UK. So for all you inspiring or professional people out there, um, depending on what you're doing, we all have different techniques on how we use uh, and carve polystyrene and we all use completely different tools as well by all accounts. Um, so now I'm going to run through some of the tools I use just to give you an idea of how I process my work uh, and how I actually go about doing my work as well. First of all I buy polystyrene and I get it in what we call billets, 8 foot, 4 foot by 2 foot. So they're fair sized chunks, 8 foot, 4 foot by 2 foot. And I normally use a, an ST grade, that's a standard polystyrene bead. And that's fantastic for doing the forms and figures and everything I make. But if I'm going to be doing things like uh, gravestones or faces and mouths, and teeth and everything else, I'd use a HD, and that's a, uh, a high grade polystyrene, a high density. So that's great for that, but it's more expensive polystyrene. So what I normally use for all my big pieces is a um, standard bead. And I'll show you this. This is standard polystyrene. And here in the UK, I could buy one billet for about 150 pounds. That's UK pounds. I'm not sure of what it equates to in America or Poland or wherever it happened to be, but one billet, eight by four by two, is about 150 pounds. So nice and light, and it's good. People often say, "But well, how do I stick two blocks together?" I'll show you that now. Basically, I use a PE foam, expanded foam, and it froths out, and it wants to push the two apart. But what I use is this. Nice and clean. It's a PE foam in a gun. Yeah, gun grade. It says gun grade on it, like nice and simple. And you open up the nozzle and you can squirt in length. So I'll just show you here. And you can just squirt in any length you want. And then you stick that to your block. But obviously, because it's expanding foam, it wants to push apart and slide. So, in order to keep the two blocks together, Expand the foam in there first, as a big block. I'll keep it slightly away from the edge because I don't want the foam coming through. Uh, it makes it a bit awkward to carve. Get my second block. Put it down. And I position it where I want it to go. In order to hold them together, Can use three or four things. This is like what we call a dog. It's just a bent piece of wire with the legs slightly open. So when you put the two bits of poly between them, slam it in, it pinches them together. If I'm using a little bit less sort of block size, I use a smaller dog, smaller wire, thickness wise, makes less of a hole. Push the two bits of poly and slam it in. If I'm getting finer and finer, I use a, a little wire. Close the legs a little bit, but just slightly open again. So when I push the two blocks, it pinches them together. And if I'm doing some lovely little fine work, I just use a little wooden skewer or a peg and push it through. I've squirted my foam inside there already, positioned it. Pushing my dogs in, making sure the legs are open just slightly. And I'll try and get that as many slides as I can holds it together. So there's my polystyrene held nice and tight and even if I do have a bit of a hole here or a gap I can use my PE foam and pump it up but the best thing to do if you're going to pump up a big kind of a mistake you've cut on you, you've cut off too much you can build it up but it's best to do that last thing at night and come back in the morning and it's all dry. If you try and come back after 20 minutes and cut through the PU foam is still gooey on, like on the inside, so you can't carve in, it gets all over your knife and your hands. So it's best to do it last thing at night if you're building up a big layer of the PU foam, and hopefully by the morning it's dry. Um, but that's how I hold my blocks together. Now, what I'm going to show you is what I use to cut the blocks. First of all, you've got a big shape, you've drawn a marker pen of your design, and I'll cut it off now because I, I do a lot of it. I've made myself a transformer, or I bought the transformer. I've made myself a little set of handles. It said Sculpture Studios on the side, and literally, 
depending on what size of wire I've got on there, I could have a 40 foot wire, something holding the other end, me holding this end, and cut a slice of a block lovely and straight. But if I'm going to be using small bits, I can heat up my transformer. This is a little bit red at the moment, but that's just so you, you can see it on the camera. And then, because I'm hand holding it, I can turn it off. Really controllable and quite safe. If you're going to try and get a variable transformer, get an electrician to put it together for you. So you're safe, wear a mask because it gives off fumes and use an open ventilation and all the uh, normal health and safety things you should do, uh, which is good. But I'll show you how I cut this just for demonstration purposes. I'll hold it with one hand just for the moment to say I can hold this. And it falls away. So as I'm working around my job, just taking bits off, I'm checking my model or my 3D maquette or my drawings or designs and I'm just going around and I'm taking it generally. I'm not working from one side square on. I'm walking around the whole 3D form, checking all sides at the same time and bringing the block down comfortably together, not just working from the front. Because if you work from the front, the side doesn't look good. So keep working around the block and whittle it down slowly. If you can't, get access to a transformer or a hot wire. By the way, this is called um, chrome nickel wire and it's exactly the same sort of wire you might get in an um, electric fireplace. You buy one of the elements or filaments, you pull them out and you've got chrome nickel wire. The all ordinary wire won't work. And you can buy just some great big reels if you think you're gonna be doing miles of it. Turn it on, cut it. I use this all the time. I'm really glad I've done it. I've been doing it 35 years now and this has been the most comfortable way of making things. But when I first started, I used very, very simple uh, saws. Any hardware shop or flea market, you can pick them up. You can pick up dirty or old ones and all the rest of it. Really doesn't matter, you can clean them up. A little bit of work. And then I'll use finer things to get into long corners and points. And you can get them from all general stores and else. But um, I've got lots of friends who've got lovely clean toolboxes. Look beautiful. They can't carve because they don't practice. They're too busy looking after the tools. And, and that old adage is about you look after the tools, it looks after the person or whatever. You know, it happens to be. It's, um, you're only, a tradesman is only as good as his tools. Well, I think the tradesman is only as good as how much he practice. So you can buy old tools, clean them up, and practice and practice and practice until you get you get better and better without actually knowing it, um, which is a strange thing. So, old saws for ripping down great big corners and blocks. When I've taken off um, great big pieces and I think, okay, it's time to start carving now, I've made up these nail brushes, blocks of wood with nails punching it, like into it. Nothing sophisticated, cheap. There's one I've tailor made for getting into points get under armpits and legs and whatever and this is when I'm getting a bit more form I've done little fine nails here and it's comfy and make sure well, when you make all these little things you're at right tape round it or you make them handles really smooth and ergonomic so you can hold it and you're not getting blisters on your hands or wear gloves so the main thing is you're comfortable when you're working things cross hatch and keep going but they're just cheap nail brushes cost me nothing to make but a little bit of time when I've used that and I'm getting into a bit of detail work, I use what we call a um, kind of chopping knife. It has a lovely broad blade here so you can rip out pieces and just take it and whittle it away and pick things out and work your way down your blades until you're doing some lovely fine work and you can carve in detail. And once again, these knives are used for resin, polystyrene, everything we use in the workshop. But when I go to use my carving again, I clean them up home the blade down again a little bit and I've got lovely clean set All right. but because we use them again and again in the workshop they get used for everything so nothing gets left out and when I go to use polystyrene I just clean them up again all different shapes and sizes and I'll start carving some more detail and some lovely shapes and forms I've got this here oh, I'll show you a bit better on that one uh, yeah it's got it's like a rasp what woodworkers would use you get all different shapes and they have lovely little teeth on them these have lasted me years and years so 
So when I have a block of polystyrene, once again, like wear a mask, but I'm trying to talk to you, so I won't bother for a moment. And lovely forms just develop. Once again, if you use the HD block, that'd be a lot tighter and a lot neater. But for what I'm doing, generally, that's okay. And they're called stonemasons rifflers, so beautiful tool in the last years and years, provided you look after them. Finally, I use blocks. I can use lumps of wood, get some double-sided tape and stick some sandpaper on it. Cut love, nice forms and nice shapes. But because on this particular one, I've put it into foam, I can curve it a little bit and I can go around corners, not corners, but nice round internal corners and forms and it, it takes the form up itself. So it works really, really well. Different, like different sizes, different blocks and it's nice and comfy to hold. For fine detail, I normally cut the corners off my grade of sandpaper, hold it between your fingers like that and you can just, I'll get that piece right just done. And you get lovely, lovely shapes going on. Now, if you find you're doing great big forms like out here, I normally get a glove because it, it's hard work trying to hold on to a piece of paper. So I'll get a glove and I'll stick some of my pad onto the glove, slide your hand up the glove, and off you go. You can just carve wonderful forms up there without any effort because your fingers are in the glove. So that works like, really well. So. But yeah, um, I have thousands of requests of people it's asking me what I do and how I'll go about my business. Um, we've got 300 videos up on YouTube so you can have a look at different projects we have done and the way that we carry out. There's no particular way that, which is right or wrong, but this is the way I handle it because horses for courses almost. Uh, I won't befriend like anyone on Facebook because I find that's quite time consuming and a thousand quits of calls. But if anyone has one particular need, they can get in contact with me through um, uh, through the phone carving page or something, and hopefully I can answer them. But check out my videos, sculpturestudios.co.uk. Uh, and all to you and them fresh people who are starting to carve out there, inspiring carvers, uh, happy days. And let's see some of your work. Um, I love my work and I'm not sure what else I would be doing in life if I wasn't carving. And the best thing about it is I work with my four sons as well, they come and help us in the studio and it's fantastic. Win-win. Cheers everyone.